I think one of the best things about being a gardener is learning how to grow spaghetti. I love spaghetti. It's one of my favorite meals, especially with a nice tomato sauce made from tomatoes from my garden and a nice glass of red wine. Today, I'm going to show you the entire process of how to grow spaghetti from seed to table. And be sure and stick around to the very end because at the end of this video, you'll find the most important piece of information of how to grow spaghetti. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and today is a very special day in my garden because today is the day I plant my spaghetti. Now, spaghetti takes about six months to grow. So, for me, this is the beginning of October. And I like to start my spaghetti at the same time that I start my garlic. I'll be planting a certified organic brand of spaghetti that can be purchased in many stores. Spaghetti is one of those amazing plants that will actually grow roots all along the stem. You're probably familiar with that attribute of tomatoes. If you bury tomatoes deep, well, they'll grow roots everywhere that that stem is buried. That's the same with spaghetti. When you harvest it, you'll actually see little hairs up and down the spaghetti stem. Those hairs are removed during processing. A lot of gardeners that grow spaghetti think it's those hairs that grow into roots, but it's actually the cells in between the hairs. They're called adventitious cells. And when those cells are exposed to the moist conditions, like in a garden bed, they'll start to send out roots. And because that happens throughout the entire stem, that means we can take a cutting of spaghetti and actually break it into smaller pieces and it's these smaller pieces that we'll be putting into the ground. So, one processed stem of spaghetti can actually give us as many as eight or ten individual seed pieces to put into the ground. Spaghetti is actually quite easy to grow, and I don't know why more gardeners don't have it in their gardens. The spaghetti that you're probably used to is in a dormant stage. That's how we buy it, and that's typically how we cook it. And it's in this dormant stage that we want to put it into the ground. It's a cool season plant. So I'm doing this in the fall, while it's still relatively warm out, and some roots will develop in the soil until it freezes. I'm planting my spaghetti in the same bed that I'm planting my garlic. And if you've got any questions about that, you can actually check out my garlic video. The cloves are all laid out, ready to go, and I like to do this first because I'll be planting this spaghetti in between where I'm planting the garlic cloves. And I do that for a couple different reasons. First, as the garlic grows, I think it really adds flavor to the spaghetti. So when I'm harvesting the spaghetti next spring, it'll have a very slight garlic flavor, and I really like that. But most importantly, the garlic will help deter some of the worst spaghetti pests. Without the garlic, there's the possibility that the spaghetti weevil can burrow into the soil and eat the roots, and I won't have any spaghetti crop at all. But garlic really helps deter the spaghetti weevil. So by planting the spaghetti in between all of this, I'm almost guaranteed a harvest. You want to break off pieces that are about one one and a half inches long. That's about three to five centimeters. If they're a little longer than that, that's okay. I really wouldn't go any shorter than about an inch. Really no shorter than about three centimeters. Now we want each of these individual pieces to be planted vertically, and we want the depth to be about twice the height of these pieces. So, a one inch piece 
would be planted about two inches deep. A three centimeter piece would go six centimeters deep. We could use a trowel, and I like the trowel that's got measurements on it, to dig a little hole and then place the spaghetti in. But I don't think that's always necessary. If you've got good, loose garden soil, which is best for spaghetti to grow in, you can take your spaghetti piece, place it vertically, and then just push it in with your finger. And typically, if you go to about your first knuckle, that'll be deep enough. I have this garlic planted six inches apart, but you can get much closer than that with spaghetti. I like to put the spaghetti in about three inches apart. I think that gives plenty of room for the roots to grow. If you like more slender spaghetti, well then plant them closer together, one or two inches apart. And because their roots will be growing together, they won't get as big. The stem will be thinner when you plant the spaghetti closer together. With everything planted, now we take the time to water it in very well. A really nice deep watering. With everything watered, now it's time to mulch the bed. I like using straw, good thick layer of straw. This acts like a blanket to help keep the soil warmer longer. Even when it gets cold at night and even the snow starts to fall, with a good layer of mulch, the soil will stay warm enough for the spaghetti to start to form roots. And to help keep the mulch in place, I'll give it another really thorough watering. And this will help the mulch settle down onto the soil. So now I'll treat this bed just like any other bed that I just put seeds into. I'll water regularly to keep the soil moist. We don't want those little spaghetti cuttings to dry out before they start sending out the roots. I may even need to water during the winter. Usually for me the snow is enough to keep the soil moist, but if it's an extra dry year, I may need to come out with a watering can and keep it watered. And then I'll just wait for the spring and hopefully get some really good green spaghetti growth. I find it best to check on the spaghetti on the coldest and dreariest of winter days. In the same spot where I started my garlic months ago, on a frigid winter day, the spaghetti is just starting to peek out of the snow. These are the conditions that spaghetti loves for starting its first growth. In only about four to six weeks, all of these very small spaghetti seedlings will branch out, grow tall, and be ready to harvest. I'm very cold, but I'm very happy. So I'm going to go inside and I'll continue to check on the progress of the spaghetti over the next few weeks. My snow has melted and the days are starting to warm up and the spaghetti is starting to sprout. Where in the snow I might have had a single stalk now it's starting to branch out, and every one of those seeds right now is giving me three, four, even five stalks in some places. As the weather warms, the spaghetti is going to grow very quickly. So I'm going to come out about every two or three days just to see how it's progressing. And when it gets to the point that it's ready to harvest, I'm looking forward to a delicious spaghetti dinner. My days have been much warmer. The spaghetti has 
turn to a really nice dark green and the tips are just starting to turn brown. That's the first indication that the spaghetti is ready to harvest. In my area, that happens pretty close to the first day of spring, but it might happen sooner in your area depending on how cold and snowy your winter is. Harvesting spaghetti is incredibly easy. You can come in and cut off each of these stalks, but when the tip turns brown, one of the reasons that happens is because at the base where it's attached to the root, it's softening. And so it's very easy to just pull the spaghetti stalk away from the root, and that's how you harvest it. And so now I'll go through and harvest these rows very quickly and easily. So all of these that have a brown top, I'll harvest. There's still a few smaller pieces that are still green. I'll leave them in the ground to continue developing. And so now I'll just come right on through. Now I don't like to grab the whole area and pull it up because you can pull up the roots. And it's possible that some of these smaller pieces will continue to grow. So just one at a time, I'll harvest all of these nice little spaghetti stalks. I have a nice little harvest so far, and this is enough for at least one meal. So next I'll go inside and I'll show you the very easy process for drying this spaghetti and getting it ready to eat. And so with the spaghetti in hand, now I'm ready to get it ready for storage and ultimately making into dinner. And I want to do that by allowing it to continue drying. Do not wash the spaghetti at this point. First, it'll get really soggy. And second, it'll delay the drying process. To start the drying process, I just take these newly harvested stalks of spaghetti and spread them out on newspaper. You could easily use wax paper, plastic, foil, just something that you can lay them out to continue drying. And after about three or four days, you'll see that the stalks have completely dried and turned into the nice golden color of spaghetti that you're used to seeing in the stores. Once the spaghetti is dry, you can store it easily up to six months, or you can use it right away and make a nice spaghetti dinner. I'm going to store it. I've saved this old box of spaghetti that I had purchased, and I'm just going to put it into this box. When I get ready to make my dinner, that's when I'll wash off soil and anything else that's accumulated on the spaghetti. For now, I'm going to put this in my pantry until I'm ready to eat. So you've seen the entire process, and now you know how to grow spaghetti. The most important piece of information, the one that you've been waiting for, is the time of year that you should eat it. I like to have a spaghetti meal on April 1st. That's April Fool's Day. And at least in the United States, that's a date when the information you get might be a little bit questionable. If you have any questions about growing spaghetti in your garden, please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up and share it. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>